Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier, and welcome to whatever I decide to title this video. I'll be covering intermediate to advanced tips, stuff I use you may not have heard from anywhere else, covering anything from niche enemy tricks to broader everyday life hacks. So I'll kind of go down the line and drop facts applicable to each map. He's still coming out. <laughs> you can drop off big loot on this corner here so it's easier for you and your teammates to sell. Jeb, the Lovecraftian horror buddy in your walls really does not like sound, which includes things like robot toys, air horns, talking, and the belt itself. So keep it at a level 3, use your inside voices, and don't put too much noisy scrap on his table. Please. You only need to press the bell as many times as it takes for him to open the door. Any more than that will anger him. You can tell the rank of your teammates because it's displayed right on their suit. The order of expertise goes intern, part-time, employee, leader, and finally boss. You can also tell their cause of death by either looking at the state of their corpse or by skinning the body. Mauling! You can also drop loot off this edge to avoid the stupid ladder. You can jump right out of the fire exit on this ledge to safely scare your teammates. Also, it's a lot faster. If you still have teammates inside, you can order a walkie-talkie to distract any dogs nearby. Just keep in mind they will still target any footsteps. Move the light switch here just in case you run a stormy moon. The glow of the monitor makes it easier to flip. It can sometimes be a better idea to leave heavy loot like these, as they can have too low a value to make the trek home worth it. Since the Hydra Gear, aka Blob, aka Goop, aka quote, what is that thing, can only attack if you're on the ground, it's possible to jump over it if it's blocking a path. Just note its hitbox is not always obvious, as it contorts its visual shape. Right when you start landing on Assurance, you can safely jump on this rock to save 15 seconds or so, and look cool because that's really what matters. In public lobbies, I see people make pillow forts like this because they think it's gonna stop a pit bull from swimming across the Atlantic and ripping their face off. I haven't seen it work once, although there is a tip for a later date to survive dogs running in the ship. The fire escape on Assurance is pretty straightforward to get to and arguably safer than the main door because you don't gotta run through a choke point to get back to the crib. Honestly, just spam scan basically at all times. It helps you find the main entrance or ship through terrain, it sees items before you do, and can help see a little better in the dark. This is ingrained in my muscle memory by now. The jump has a small delay before you actually jump, but as long as you are on a surface when you press space, you will jump regardless of if you are falling or not. Sometimes the audio can be a little unpredictable. In this example, you can hear the pods jingle clear as day inside, but fades out as you get closer, as well as there being no real vertical audio to differentiate what floor the audio cues are coming from. Since snare fleas are pretty common on assurance, let's talk about how to counter them. First, you can literally just sit still. Once you hit critical HP, they jump off and scurry away. Next, you can either have someone ask you the three questions and bludgeon your face, or you can crouch and find the weapon you had and hit it yourself. Or have someone run you to the door, or teleport. Really isn't a very threatening enemy if you know what's up. The most common threat on Vow is the Bracken, as his spawn chance is higher than every other enemy. Even though very cute, he tends to be a bit shy. Looking at him at all will trigger him to break contact with whoever he's stalking and shimmy away. In a pinch, you can even push him back as long as you keep eyes on him. In isolation, he really isn't a huge threat, as it takes a moderate amount of mouse movement to keep him back. Just don't stand and think for too long when he's around. Don't push him into a corner. The tables will turn real quick when he's the one walking toward you. No. 
The bridge on Vow seems to break if you have enough weight on it for enough time, but as you can see here, I'm able to get across with around 100 pounds as long as I have a full stamina bar when I start. Any more than that will break though. The best path to traverse Vow is taking an immediate 90 to the right out of the ship, and the best way back is to round this little hill here, that way you have good cover from giants both ways. The best method for getting beehives is solo. Get yourself within the area where you can scan to see the price, make sure you have a full stamina bar and run in, triggering the bees to fly toward you. The moment they start, strafe, pick up the hive, and slam dunk it on the back of the ship. Just remember to snag it later after you start to head out. Don't worry about being on the catwalk, you get teleported inside. If you start getting chased by something that will certainly kill you, spam drop everything you have and run out of there. Weight has a huge impact on how much distance you can create from an enemy. Right here, you see I'm able to just outrun the giant and give myself a second chance at life. Except it's a giant bro, these guys are garbage. They camp the ship indoors because they linger where they last saw you. I could swoop in there and grab it and die, but... What? You can actually clip out of the ship with props to avoid dogs running in and ruining your day, or to speed up exiting in a different direction. All you have to do is select a big prop like the bunk bed, and scroll when you want it to push you through. <laughs> Since thumpers are really common on offense, let me trauma dump a little bit. The main way to counter them is to jump up on a railing and beat them with any weapon. But for that, you need railing you can jump on, and a weapon. A lot of the railing you can normally jump on is obscured by something you won't see on the ceiling, so it's best to premeditate the murder. If he sneaks up on you or you don't have a weapon, you simply get trapped and escape might not be very practical depending on your surroundings. I find it's best not to challenge him because he is deceptively powerful if you can't railing cope. You can jump on these pipes as the ship is landing to quickly and laterlessly get to the fire escape. Just keep in mind you need a ladder to get loot back if you don't drop it off the water tower. And here's the two spots for the ladder. You can either put it right next to the water tower or on the tall rock next to it. Climb up and jump from the top of the ladder to get up. I find the rock to be a little easier. You can use stun grenades to trip landmines without dying, and potentially take an enemy with it in the process if you're actually goaded. Pick up the dud flash and do it again for free. Offensive scary monsters and nice sprites spawn earlier in the day than other maps, making the way home more risky. Although what does spawn isn't exactly the biggest threat in the world, because there's a good chance the dogs and baboon hawks fight each other. Oh, kill him. Every time your stash outside has a two-handed item and enough regular items to fill the rest of your inventory, it's totally worth your time to bring it all back right away, as it's much easier the earlier you get it over with. The arrow seems to point at a disjointed section of the ship, so I can't say it's reliable. This might get fixed in the future, though. In the terminal, you can type in view monitor to open up the same camera you see on the screen by the lever. You can see colors a little better, and you can type in codes for doors, landmines, and turrets instantly. Copy and paste switch so you can rapidly change to teammates if they're in danger. You can also scan instantly from here and let your mates know how much they suck at the game. In a pinch, you can ping a radio scanner and divert a dog if desired. Oh! You got it! I guess now I'll try to stand on it, and then you disable it. Because you can safely stand on it. Then if you disable it, yep. Nice, dude. Since bees are the most common on March, here's what you have to do to get them. Since the ship really only touches the ground in this one spot, you have to drag the bees to this side of the ship to get the slam dunk. If you plan on getting more bees, I recommend putting the nest down on the side so you have more room to put others on the back. You can also jump up on the railing as you're landing to get a glimpse of the surrounding area, as bees like to glow from range. The stamina bar is slightly deceptive, so really the stamina bar reaches from here to here, which is why you should drop the hive as your stamina visually depletes, 
as a little bit of extra stamina is perfect for getting away in time. Since March is the only map to have three fire exits while most only have one, here's a quick pathing guide on how to get to them. This is useful for not only having more entry points, but you can make a riskier play as getting deeper into the map to find more loot. It's somewhat common to see two fire exits near each other, which I find myself utilizing to rotate around the giants which are common on this map. Coordination and speed are rewarded for this reason. Because of what tends to spawn on this map, I do recommend bringing a shovel to beat stuff to death for good. Here's what the spawns look like. And no, the Bracken was not scripted. Out of all the maps, Rend has the worst fire exit as it's stuck in a ravine and there's really only one truly egregarious way out. So normally you stick to the main entrance here. Which is totally fine because Rend is built different. Look at these spawn rates. They seem high until you realize the max power is only at 10. March is at 14 for example. So you can always expect there to be around 3 to 4 monsters in there that are all really powerful, but manageable, rather than tons of random creatures. Personally, Rend is my favorite map. It's almost always the mansion variant, which has better lighting and the layout is more obvious in my humble opinion. Since Rend is never too hectic, team coordinated traversal is easy, with most of the callouts being you got five items in the kitchen, two in the room outside, hang a left and there's another. With the occasional, watch the jester. It's a good map for 550 credits. I'm also going to sneak in some nerd math. Working out the average quotas from the equation on the Lethal Company wiki, it goes 130, 243, 374, 537, 743, 1006, 1337, 1750, and 2256. Good luck getting past that. The ghost girl really isn't that threatening of an enemy. She can only target one player at a time. When present, she normally proves she has a stuffy nose and drowns out all of their sound. The third time you see her, she will start skipping toward you at a slightly faster than normal walking speed. Drop your stuff and keep her distance until she vanishes again. Normally when I hear a teammate call out they have a new supernatural friend, I direct them to the terminal of the ship and make them make callouts instead. It's safer inside. Aw, oh, you stupid bitch. Dying at 600 credits is a crazy map indoors. Everything and anything will spawn very quickly. It's guaranteed to be the mansion variant and also has great loot. The fire exit is very accessible as it's a 15 second sprint and one extension ladder away out the gate. Dine holds my favorite use for the radio scanner. I like to bisect the distance between the fire exit and the ship to give my teammates confidence in their direction, as well as aid them on their way back home in case there's dogs around. Not insanely useful, but by the time you're playing Dine, you probably have enough money to afford one. It also works as a lightning rod, which can kill dogs if you spam ping. There is a shortcut on Dine to get to the main entrance slightly faster, but it's not really worth straying away from lit tethers after you just land. The Jester is a heat-seeking missile that launches a minute after you see him. Phase 1, he spends 20 seconds following someone. Phase 2, he spends 40 seconds cranking his jack. And Phase 3, he kills everyone in reach. The best way to counter him is to get everyone out but one soldier, who stays behind and babysits him until he enters phase 3, to which you exit the building and count to 5. As soon as you're done, you can re-enter and he will return to phase 1. From now on, don't go too deep inside or else you will come. Titan, at 700 credits to enter, is the most rewarding and consequently the most dangerous map to tackle. It has a small chance of being the mansion variant. It can quickly pick off uncoordinated groups as it has the highest indoor creature power at 18 and spawns loads of hard to counter enemies. Your best bet is to have an attack plan already sorted out to maximize the 5 grand of loot that spawns inside almost every night. Dropping loot off this extension ladder placement puts your items right in front of the ship, speeding up securing loot by a lot. Just watch out for enemies spawning right on top of you. 
Coil heads require the most attention of any indoor enemy because they never give you a break. You can either have someone babysit the coil head to completely mitigate their effect on your teammates or lock them in an enclosed space. Closing regular doors will stop them for a while, but after about 30 seconds, they open it and continue being a menace. He's the last thing you want to see if you have other enemies nearby. Alright, now cross the room and keep, just keep looking at him. He's gone. Let's go! Wait. Let's go! Now's a good time to say you can't die from fall damage. I spent the entire day doing a Titan Leap of Faith, which is a good way to transport loot while holding a radio. Speaking of radios, their battery lasts just over 13 minutes while a normal day cycle is 12 minutes. That means 5 o'clock hits around 50% battery, assuming you charged it when you were landing. Um, If you don't want to ask every round, you can click your radio in the ship to listen for who has the radio on, as you can hear the beep from a switched on radio. Alright, that's all I got for today. I just want to say this is really my first time making a video ever, and it was a ton of fun. This took me around 20 hours, so if you learned something, rate the video 5 stars and I might just make another one. Thank Big Tony in the comments for the thumbnail, and continue your quest with this guy.